Introduction Chindunduma is a school in northeastern Zimbabwe, built after independence to enable many of the young women and men who had left their homes to join the armies of liberation and fight for the freedom of their country to complete their interrupted education. In July 1981, a group of these young ex-guerrillas were describing and reliving some of their experiences of the war. They spoke of their life in the guerrilla camps in Mozambique and of the campaigns in which they took part inside Zimbabwe, of the lessons in politics and development they had received, of their fears and their triumphs, their setbacks and their rewards. And time and time again they spoke of the help they had received during the war from their ancestors. As one young man recounted, I didn't believe all the things to tell me until I was in the bush myself. Then, well, you just had to believe. One time we had no tobacco, nothing to smoke. One of the boys went into a trance. He said that his father's brother had sent us some. His father's brother had died a long time before, so we asked him how this would happen. He said that the tobacco would be brought to us by a snake. Then the boy came out of trance, went looking in the bush and found the snake. The snake was all curled up, but there, in the middle, was a lump of tobacco. The boy clapped to the snake very politely, and the snake uncoiled itself. Then he took the tobacco and we all had a smoke. Many ex-combatants tell similar stories of how long-dead members of their families had assisted them and led them to sources of food or other supplies. But these ancestral spirits and their mediums performed more crucial tasks as well. Quote, At one time, there were so many deaths in our camps. We used to bury up to eight in a single day. We went to see this spirit medium who lived nearby. He told us that we should not bathe in the river. We should build a bathing hut, far from the river, and carry water to this place in tins. The medium told us that when we got back to our camp, a certain child would have died, but that this would be the last one who would ever die from this cause. And he was right. What happened? Many of the so-called Chimurenga songs, the songs of the War of Liberation, that were sung by guerrillas and peasants celebrate the role of the ancestors. We and our ancestors worked together here in the war. The especially important part played by the Mondoro or the royal ancestors as protectors of the land and bringers of the rains is also recognized in popular song. What are we to make of a guerrilla war fought to liberate a colonized country from its oppressors whose leaders professed a socialist ideology and a commitment to leading Zimbabwe into the modern world when the fighters themselves describe their experiences of the war in these terms? The students of Chindunduma come from all over Zimbabwe, and they are not exceptional. Reports from many of the Shana-speaking areas describe the peasants and guerrillas' experience in strikingly terms. According to Franz Fanon, one of the major theoreticians of African liberation, beliefs of this kind are quite simply not supposed to persist. He writes, After centuries of unreality, after having wallowed in the most outlandish phantoms, at long last the native, gun in hand, stands face to face with the only forces which contend for his life, the forces of colonialism. And the youth of a colonized growing up in an atmosphere of shot and fire may well make a mock of, and does not hesitate to pour scorn upon the zombies of his ancestors, the horses with two heads, the dead who rise again and the jinns who rush into your body while you yawn. The native discovers reality and transforms it into the pattern of his customs, into the practice of violence, and into his plan for freedom. 
The youth of Zimbabwe have certainly grown up in an atmosphere of shot and fire, and many have spent a good number of years with gun in hand, face to face with the forces of colonialism, and yet far from pouring scorn on these outlandish phantoms, their ancestors, they seem to believe in them as strongly as their fathers and their fathers before them. In fact, all categories of participants in the war, guerrillas, those who joined them in the bush, those who stayed in the villages, and those who fled to safer places, maintain that their ancestors protected and advised them, dreams or by means of signs that gave them warnings and instructions. Even the future Prime Minister of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe was himself assisted in his escape from Zimbabwe by an ancestor of the family which gave him shelter. The introduction to a volume of his collected speeches relates that the next two days were fraught with potential peril. Mugabe and Tekere were staying with Chief Tangwena. Mrs. Tangwena had a spirit medium who advised them to leave the by the mountain route. Mugabe did so and after a long and arduous journey arrived at a village on the Mozambican side of the border. It was not only members of the resistance who believed that the ancestors had taken part in their struggle. Many Shana members of the government forces, soldiers, policemen, local government officers also relate accounts of timely warnings and miraculous escapes which their ancestors engineered. However, it was only within the guerrilla army that this belief in the participant was elaborated into a system of ritual practices believed to place the combatants under their protection. While on active service within the borders of Zimbabwe, the guerrillas were not allowed to have sexual intercourse, they were not allowed to kill wild animals in the forest, and they were not allowed to eat certain foods. These ritual prohibitions were imposed on them by the spirit mediums. It was believed that by observing them, the guerrillas could protect themselves from the dangers of the war and increase their chances of victory.